Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of The Qualivers. I'm Jim Maltese, and today we are going to be talking about meaningful client-specific performance specifications. Do you guys ever play Box of Chocolates Netflix Edition? That's where you, you just pick whatever show the algorithm picks for you, but, but you go in blind. You don't look at the cast list, you don't look at the description or the language, etc., if I'm being honest, it's a risky game. Sometimes you get directed to the Squid Game and it's a wild, awesome ride. Other times, if like the youngins forget to change the Netflix user accounts and their preferences start to get mixed in with yours, you might get season 12 of Bluey, which um, happens to be an Australian animated TV series for preschoolers. You, you, you really just don't know what you're going to get from the algorithm. It's a, it's a young person's game, though. You know, it, it used to be fun, but now I just don't have the time or the patience for it. I want to know what I'm getting into, what, what genre it is, who's in it, how many seasons. I've got, to, I've got to prepare myself for what I'm getting into. I want to know exactly what I'm getting before pressing that play button. And that got me thinking, how many of our users have no idea what they are going to get when it comes to AV systems? Sure, they, they might know the functionality of the system, they might have signed off on the major items of equipment, but do they know how loud the system's going to be? Is there a preferred resolution for the system? How big is the display relative to the furthest viewer going to be? How does it compare to all the other systems they have deployed on their floor? Are, are they just playing Box of Chocolates AV Edition? And, and how, how have we allowed this? There was one time, I, I remember I was performing a third-party design review for a client. Um, it's, it's like a peer evaluation. So the design package was prepared by a well-established AV service provider, you know, out of New York. There were, it, it, it was fine, but there were no performance specifications included. And so I, I asked the client how, how loud the system needs to be. I, I need to verify that the system can deliver what they expect in terms of how, how loud they need the audio system to be. The client wasn't sure. They, they just never thought about it. So I asked the designer how loud the designer planned the system to be. And the designer wasn't sure either, but he said, you know what, Jim, you, you don't have to worry about it because we selected amplifiers and loudspeakers from reputable manufacturers, so it'll be as loud as it needs to be. And, and you know, that, that, that gave me pause, right? W without knowing how loud the system needs to be, there's no way to know if the amplifier has been sized appropriately for the project. Regardless of the manufacturer, you can have the perfect 60 watt amplifier, but if you need 300 watts, a 60 watt amplifier is not going to cut it. Uh, without knowing how loud the system needs to be, there's no way of determining if the loudspeakers selected can distribute audio at those levels. It's just a function of, of, of what the device can, can do. So what if the design supports a modest conference room space level like 65 to 70 dB SPLA weighted, but the clients are expecting to throw like some banger parties in this space at like 85 to 90 dB SPL. At 20 dB louder, those banger parties literally need 100 times more power than the conference space does. That's a, that's a big difference. Um, you know, th there was another project we got called in for where we needed to design the audio system for uh, a trading floor on the New York Stock Exchange. And this is where people are yelling and screaming, higher, lower, freeze, go, go, more, more, more. So the noise floor that the system had to overcome was 90 to 95 dB already. So the system had to distribute audio at 100 to 105 to get over that yelling din of noise. Um, the, the system we were hired to replace it just couldn't, it, it couldn't cut it. The loudspeakers were too small. The amplifiers were undersized. It couldn't perform its needed task. So we need to know how loud a system needs to be to verify that the system can deliver that performance. And what about display size? A lot of people still use the old 468 rule where the furthest viewer needs to be less than four times, six times, or eight times the height of the display away, depending on the task at hand. Do I need to see details? Can I just look at some general text? Um, 
But does it work for the clients and, and users? Does the 468 rule work for everyone? Can users easily sign into the system from anywhere in the table? Uh, or are they squinting at the head of the table because they can't see what they're typing? And, and do they have to move closer to the display to, to see what text is being inputted? That's not a properly designed system. And in my humble opinion, if we're designing systems with the users in mind, anyone should be able to use or read text on the screen regardless of where at the table they are sitting. And the flip side is to use the Discus standard from Avixa, and it's a great standard. It's got a lot of good stuff in it, but oftentimes it leads to much larger displays than we're used to. For good reason, of course, so people can actually see what's going on on, on the screen. However, not many people are hip to putting 86 inch or, or 98 inch displays in small conference rooms where they may have been expecting to put in a 55 inch display in the past. It's a business decision. There's a lot that goes into selecting the proper display size for a conference space. We need to keep the user experience in mind, but we also can't bankrupt the department by putting large screen direct view video walls everywhere. Believe me, I've tried. The big question is, have we had these discussions with the client to come up with a client specific performance specification for determining the criteria, the criteria needed to select the best display size for those particular users? And while we're talking about being able to read text on the display, what about the preferred resolution for the system? What should that be? How often are we as an industry just leaving the resolution management set to to auto, right? Let, let the algorithm figure it out, it'll be fine, instead of determining the most appropriate resolution for the task at hand. If a system can handle 4K resolutions, should we let it? 4K images look incredible when they're on a 46 inch monitor a few feet from my, my face, but have you ever experienced one in a boardroom? The text is so tiny, it's difficult to read at the closest seats to the display, never mind in the rear of the room. You can't see anything. And so 1080p might be a good compromise, right? It, it's still one of the most popular native resolutions on most internal laptop screens. So the image will look the same in the system um, as it does on, on the internal, on, on the laptop. But if the critical task of the system is reading text during meetings on documents and spreadsheets and web pages, maybe making the preferred resolution 720p might be preferable. And before you, you know, get, get after me, the default text size uh, will be 50% larger on a 720p signal than a 1080p signal. So if we set it to 720p, the text size will be 50% larger on the screen. And if we set it to 720p, it'll be 200% larger than text on a 4K signal. That's a big difference in readability. But what if this is a medical organization or an engineering firm or, or an installation for the military where they're looking at x-rays or drawings or maps, having those extra pixels in a 4K image, it might be just a requirement. I guess what I'm saying is there, there's no right or wrong answer for all users, but preferred system resolution should be part of the performance specifications and it should be determined with intention instead of haphazardly leaving the system on auto. And we haven't even spoken about projectors yet. The effectiveness of a projected image comes down to contrast ratio. If there is not enough difference between the white pixels, which is the projector full on, and the black pixels, which is the projector almost off, the image will appear washed out and difficult to read. I'm gonna get tired of looking at, like not tired of looking at it, but literally fatigued trying to figure out what's on the screen. Um, what that means, and, and what, what many people don't realize is that a projector doesn't project black pixels. It just sends as little light as possible for those pixels. And what that means is that the blackest pixel a projector can produce is what shade the projector screen is with the ambient lighting in the room. And just think, think about that for a second. That white screen, and they're, they're usually white, the white screen at the front of the room is the system black of the projector system. So let's, let's look at that one more time. That white screen, it's white. 
The screen is white at the front of the room. That is the darkest shade that projection system can produce. And that means that the projector has to project something so bright that the white projection screen looks black in comparison. And our brains will, will, will work out the rest, right? We, we do it, but that's contrast ratio, right? The, the projector creating whites that are so much brighter than that white projection screen at the front of the room. Now, what should that contrast ratio be? Avixa did a, a great job with their Pisker standard and now their updated Isker standard. But for typical conference rooms, we, you know, they recommend a 15 to 1 contrast ratio. And that, it produces a really good looking front projection image. However, that typically requires a brighter projector than many people are used to. And if you've been to a convention center lately, without fail, and we, we measure this in the CTSD class, without fail, those convention center projection systems, they're usually like uh, two meters by three meters, um, and they usually have a decent sized projector, but they only have a contrast ratio of no joke, two to one or three to one. And without fail, that's, that's right around the range of those convention center projectors. And that's why it's so difficult to stay awake. It's so difficult to see what's going on or appreciate the imagery that are in those presentations because the contrast ratio is so poor. Regardless, we need to discuss this and perhaps even demonstrate various contrast ratios to the users so that they get a sense of what is at stake, right? If we've got some control over the lighting in the room, we can usually demonstrate um, at least three or four different contrast ratios. We can measure it for them uh, so that they, they see what the image will look like at those different lighting levels. So Avixa recommends 15 to 1 contrast ratio, but the client might disagree due to performance. Maybe they need better than 15 to 1. Maybe they're fine with 10 to 1. Um, they need to be considering cost. You know, these projectors can, can cost a lot of money or product availability. This has been plaguing us for, for years, right? There's a bunch of, of, of factors that go into that decision. And I guess what I'm saying is there's no hard and fast design rule for contrast ratio but it should be designed for with approved and informed decisions. And listen, the designs and installations have been turned over to users for years without these performance specifications being nailed down. But I'm not sure that, that we can really call them completed. Um, you know, performance specifications are specific details, but they are just as important as a functional narrative or an equipment list. The, the narrative and the bomb will define the functionality of the room, what it will do, but the performance specifications take that one step further. They define not what the system will do, but how the system will perform. They provide the answers to, to the, the, the performance test, they, the, 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 the commissioning. They're, they're the answers to the commissioning checklist. And without them, we run the risk of the revolving door warranty calls regarding not being able to hear the system well, not being able to see what's on the screen well, or, or worse, the user's just getting fed up with the performance and then we don't get any calls at all because they don't like the system that was delivered and they take their business elsewhere. No one can afford that. The, the, the industry can't afford that. These performance specifications may be seen as overly geeky to some, too, too, it's too much, it's, it's too much information, but they are very easy to demonstrate to non-tech savvy users. And think about the valuable connection you could make with a user by taking the time to demonstrate these system parameters instead of just assuming they don't care what they are or, or, or they, 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 they just don't want to hear it. Think about how incredible it would be to have every system deployed for a client perform the same way, regardless of room size or functionality. And that's the great thing about performance specifications. That's why it's a completely different thing from functional narrative or equipment list. The, the, the function list and, and uh, the, the equipment will determine the functionality of the room, what the room will be capable of, but the performance specification is how it's going to behave. And so you can have the same performance regardless of room size, regardless of equipment, because it's just how loud the system's gonna be, how, how large the text on the screen is, how, loud the, how large the display will be, dependent on how far away you are seated in the room. So you can have the same performance 
regardless of room size or functionality. And, and how incredible would it be to be able to deliver that consistency to your clients, to your users? And that's, that's quality. That is exactly quality right there. That's why performance specifications are so important. Clients and users of AV, AV, of AV systems deserve to know exactly what they are going to get when they request an AV system. Performance specifications draw a very clear finish line, which benefits everyone involved. Users get the system they, 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 they need, and um, the service providers know exactly when a system is complete because it satisfies all those requirements. AV systems should not be like a box of chocolates, and users should not accept whatever is generically recommended to them, like when they're binging on the Netflix. How an AV system performs should be clearly defined with direction from users. And I, I honestly don't see any other way to successfully deliver solutions that will meet user needs. So thank you. That was a, a, another edition of the Qualiverse. I hope you like and subscribe this channel so you can get more Qualiverse in, uh, in your inbox. Um, and please reach out if you'd like to see any topic or, or hear a little bit more about any quality management um, any, any quality management issue that, that, have, that you've been noodling on. Uh, so I hope to see you next time and have an AV day.